Meanwhile, the New York Times published an op-ed over the weekend, really disgusting, suggesting the public shaming of Border Patrol agents. The article says, quote, immigration lawyers have agent names, journalists reporting at the border have names, photos, and even videos. These agents' actions should be publicized. It continues that this is not an argument for doxing. It's about exposure of their participation in atrocities. Really? Our next guest, it sounds like doxing to him, uh, which he has dealt with firsthand. Retired acting ICE director and Fox News contributor Tom Holman. Tom, you read about this. You heard about this. What are your thoughts? Let's, let's expose the personal information of those working the border. It's, dis it's disgusting. I mean, it happened to me when I was director. They doxed me, my home address, and... I had 80 protesters at my house on a Sunday morning. It's just ridiculous because whoever wrote this op-ed obviously has never spoken to a Border Patrol agent, and she's pushing a false narrative. This is all about Border Patrol agents who are tearing children apart and not taking care of children properly. I've been there. I was a Border Patrol agent. I was there on the border just a couple years ago. These Border Patrol agents are taking sickness home to their own families because they're taking care of sick children. They're changing diapers and making formula. These Border Patrol agents did not sign up for this. They're fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters themselves. They're doing a tremendous job, and they need to be respected for it. I mean, they, they should be lauded. Uh, the fact that they're being uh, vilified is unbelievable. It gets worse. Uh, they said this uh, in the New York Times uh, editorial. The desire to avoid this kind of social shame may be enough to persuade some agents to quit or hinder the recruitment of their replacements. They're never going to bully a uh, Border Patrol agent or an ICE agent. And let's talk about her fault scenario. Just like the, all the Democratic presidential candidates went down to that facility in Florida where the children are being detained by Health Homestead. and Human Services. Who are those children? They were never taken from their parents. These children enter the country illegally on their own. Their parents already separated themselves. So when that 2,500 children were separated and everybody went crazy over, no one talked about the 15,000 children that were separated by their parents put in the hands of a criminal organizations smuggling to the United States. 51,000 since, uh, I believe, November have come here unaccompanied minors. And when people see those facilities and they say, the Republicans put kids in cages, what should they know about these facilities? First of all, those facilities were built in FY15. I was there and they were built. They were approved, funded, and built under the Obama administration. And I'm not, look, first of all, I don't think they're cages. They're, they're large enclosures to keep children away from uh, unrelated adults to protect the children until they can move to HHS facility. They're a necessary, it's a necessary facility, and we're still using them today. Beto O'Rourke went down there to the Mexican side to see uh, those seeking asylum, but they're awaiting in Mexico. Here's a little about what he said he discovered. All right, we don't have it. Basically, he's going back and forth, and he sympathizes with them as they wait for asylum. Now look, we all sympathize with people who want a better life, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. I bet you Beto Work will not stop by and talk to a border patrol agent that deals with us every day. Again, they're, they're human beings. They have hearts. They're mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. They're seeing this travesty every day. They're finding dead bodies. They're finding people drowned in the river. Why not talk to a board patrol agent and thank them for their support and all the work they're putting into this? AOC is going down there today to the El Paso sector. What do you think she's going to find? She's going to find a, a sector out of control. She's going to find a bunch of men and women wearing a green uniform that are defending their nation, doing the best job they can. These are American heroes, and they should be thanked. Uh, let's uh, talk about what the Democrats were trying to push in their debates and what we're hearing over the weekend. Is that these kids, it's all about these kids, and they're not being treated humanely. What's your reaction to that? The kids are being treated very, very humanely, but the government's treating them better than the criminal cartels that smuggle into this country. And look, if these children are really escaping violence in Central America, in you know, uh, El Salvador, Honduras, why is the parent here? and not El Salvador taking care of the child. Rather than going down and taking care of the child, they're going to hire a criminal organization to put that child in the trunk of a car or back of a tractor trailer to come to the United States. That's inhumane. That's mistreatment. The U.S. government is actually taking pretty good care of these children. On Friday, the, uh, the Ninth District uh, Court of Appeals rejected the, rejected the president's move to take $2.4 billion from the defense budget and put it towards building a barrier. Doesn't surprise me. It's the Ninth Circuit. ACLU and the left knows exactly where to go to sue the president. This isn't the first time, won't be the last time. The Ninth Circuit, the Ninth Circuit's to blame for this whole surge. If you look at it, the Flores Settlement Agreement by Judge, uh, Judge Dolly G was the worst decision by the Ninth Circuit that done more damage to this country than any federal decision I've seen. That's why the families are coming across and they can't be detained. What's unbelievable is we have Bill Clinton on camera saying, I need these were all built. He was the first one to start it. George Bush got the money to do it. They talk about the Senator Reid talking about the illogic of uh, chain migration. 
This is not made up video. This all existed. What changed in this country? The situation only got worse. The resistance, they want the Democratic Party, the leadership, and all, everyone who stood on that stage last week, they want to see this president fail in his number one promise. But the president's not going to fail. Everything they said last week was about protecting illegal immigrants, making the illegal immigration legal, giving a pathway to citizenship, citizenship free medical care. Do they think at the time of this crisis that helps? That's just, going to, that's just going to convince more people to make that dangerous journey. More women will be raped and more children will die because they're enticing them to come to this country. And, and you have some children in your pocket. Uh, there's people that, uh, that are important to bring up. Now, Senator Lindsey Graham gave me a little bit of hope because you've talked about simple asylum fixes that would change the situation at the border dramatically. He spoke with Nancy Pelosi for an hour yesterday. Listen. About an hour with uh, Speaker Pelosi. And here's the compromise. We'll start turning the aid back on to Central America. It is in our national security interest to help the Triangle, Northern Triangle nations with their economy, with their rule of law problems. But if you don't turn off the magnets that attract people, which is our asylum laws, if you don't reform them, they'll keep coming. This legislation did. It addressed what you wanted him to address. So I think something's being cut here. Am I, am I falsely optimistic? No, I think Lindsey Graham has a lot of good ideas. Uh, as far as giving... But the fact that he talked to Nancy Pelosi, yeah. who could make it happen. Well, look, Nancy Pelosi only came to the table when the president says, we're going to go out and arrest illegal aliens, especially the families that have final orders that have been ordered removed by a judge. The border crisis wasn't enough to her to come to the table. Children dying wasn't enough to her to come to the table. She only came to the table when ISIS was going to go out and do a national operation. All of a sudden now, they're concerned because, again, they're protecting the illegal, the illegal immigrants in the United States. So uh, we have that going, and we have the, Mex the move for Mexico to put tariffs on unless they acted. They, this seemed by almost all accounts, the numbers for June are down to 89,000. Still bad, but not 130. And a lot of people say, look at what Mexico's doing on the southern border. What have you seen? Mexico has really stepped up. This president, once again, took everybody to school. The Democrats were against the terror threat. Even some in his own party were against the terror threats. But once again, this president has proved he knows more about this issue than they do, and they've been here for a long time. Another idea of his worked. He's a right man at the right time, doing the right thing for this country, and he will not fail the American people. And, and lastly, real quick, we talk about now uh, de uh, no longer making it illegal to come here illegally. Yeah, making illegal, making illegal immigration legal. That should help push the numbers down, right? No. That's going to just cause more people to come. If there's no consequence and no deterrence, why would you stop coming here? My hope is that Jay Johnson, a Democrat, and others who have said it's a problem at the border, now they admit it, that maybe some progress is going to be made on simple asylum fixes that will make it dramatically better for some of the unsung heroes in this country, and they are working the border. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think, look, I think they... they I think there, there could be a fix to this border, right. but the Democrats got to be willing to put their hate of this president aside to right. do the right thing for this country. Tom Holman, great to see you. Good to see Thank you. Thank you very much.